So first we have here business entity principle. So a business entity or the business enterprise is separate from the owner or investor. So separate and distinct. So any personal transactions of its owner should not be recorded in the business accounting book unless the owner's personal transaction involves adding or withdrawing, withdrawing resources from the business. So for example, if you own a computer shop, so the cash of the computer shop should be reported separately from your personal cash. Or another example is, the owner had a business meeting with a prospective client, okay? So the expenses that come with that meeting should be part of the company's expenses. If the owner paid for gas for his personal use, so it should not be included as part of the company's expenses, okay? So personal expenses is distinct and different and separate from the company's expenses. Next, we have going concern principle. So the business is expected to continue indefinitely. So on this basis, um, generally assets are recorded based on the original cost and not on market value. So assets are assumed to be held and used for an indefinite period of time or during its estimated useful life. So those assets are not intended to be sold immediately or liquidated so examples possible losses from the closure of business cannot be anticipated in the accounts right and prepayments depreciation provisions may be carried forward in the expectation of proper matching against the revenues of future periods so fixed assets are recorded at historical cost next we have time period principle so for time period principle so the financial statements are to be divided into specific time intervals. So you have monthly, quarterly, annually, semi-annually. So examples are, um, first we have Philippine companies are required to report financial statements annually. So the time period there is annual. The salary expenses from January to December 2015 should only be reported in 2015. So, the time there is from January to December 2015. So, um, calendar and fiscal year is different. So, for calendar, you start with January 1 and end with December 31. For fiscal year, you can start at February 1 or March 1 and end at the next year. That is for February 28. Okay? Next is monetary unit principle. So, for this principle, um, these are amounts stated into a single monetary unit. So, the business financial transactions recorded and reported should be in the monetary units such as Philippine pesos, US dollar, euro, or etc. So, any non-financial or non-monetary information that cannot be measured in a monetary Units are not recorded in the accounting books, but instead, a memorandum will be used. So, examples. Jollibee should report financial statements in pesos, even if they have a store in the United States or any foreign countries. Another example is the IHOP. IHOP should report financial statements in dollars, even if they have a branch here in the Philippines. So, Either you use Philippine Peso or you use dollar. Okay? Next is the historical cost. So all business resources acquired should be valued and recorded based on the actual cash equivalent or the original cost of acquisition. So not the prevailing market value of or the future value. It should be the original cost of acquisition. So the exception to the rule is when the business is in the process of closure and liquidation. So example, the cost of the fixed assets is recorded at the date of acquisition cost. So the acquisition cost there includes all expenditures made to prepare the asset for its intended use. It includes the invoice price of the assets, the freight charges, the insurance, and the installation cost, if any. Next, we have here the matching principle. So, the cost here should be matched 
with the revenue generated. So this principle um, requires that revenue recorded in a given accounting period should have an equivalent expense recorded in order to show the true profit as a business. Examples, the recording of doubtful account expense should be done when the revenue was earned. Another example is the advance payment, okay? The advance payment from clients must be recorded in the month when the services were rendered, okay? Next is, for example, the expenses incurred in generating revenues should be recorded at the time when the revenue was earned. So that is matching principle. Next, we have here the accounting period. So this principle entails a business to complete the whole accounting process over a specific operating time period. So as what I have said, accounting period may be monthly, quarterly, or annually. So for annual accounting period, it may follow a calendar or fiscal year. Next, we have here conservatism principle. So this is also known as prudence. So in case of doubt, Assets and income should not be overstated, while liabilities and expenses should not be understated. So, the principle of conservatism gives guidance on how to record uncertain events and estimate. So, the principle, this principle, conservatism, states that one should always consider an error on the most conservative side of any transaction. So, this means um, minimizing profits by recording uncertain losses or expenses and not recording uncertain or estimated gains. So, assume losses rather than gains. Next is the consistency principle. So, from the word consistency, so it states that companies should use the same accounting treatment for similar events and transactions over time. So, this does not state that business always have to use the same same accounting method forever so you can change but you have to be consistent okay for example bob's computers a computer retailer has historically used fifo or first in and first out for valuing its inventory so in the last few years the business has become quite profitable and bob's accountant suggests that bob switches to the lifo the last in first out since they have been using the first in first out so again the accountant suggests that bob switches to lifo last in first out inventory system to minimize taxable income according to the consistency principle bob's computers can change accounting methods for a justifiable reason so minimizing taxes as a justifiable reason is debatable okay Next is we have here objectivity principle. So financial statements must be presented with the supporting evidence. So the objectivity principle states that accounting information and financial reporting should be independent and supported with unbiased evidence. So this means that accounting information must be based on research and facts. Principles is aimed at making financial statements more relevant and reliable so not just merely preparers opinion so it should be what based on research and facts so for example when the customers pay Jollibee for their order Jollibee should have a copy of the receipt to represent as evidence of the transaction another example is a company is trying to get financing for an extra plant expansion so but the company's bank want to see a copy of its financial statement before it will allow a loan to the company any money so the company's bookkeeper prints out an income statement from its accounting system and mails it to the bank most likely the bank will reject this financial statement because an independent party is not the one who prepares so in other words this income statement violates the objectivity principle okay next we have revenue recognition principle so the revenue um revenue recognition principle states that revenue should be rec recognized and recorded when it is realized or realizable and when it is earned so for example 
Bob's Billiard Incorporation sells a pool table to a bar company on December 31 for the amount of, let's say, 85,000 pesos. So the pool table was not paid for until January 15, and it was not delivered to the bar until January 31. According to the revenue recognition principle, Bob's should not record the sale in December. So even though the sale was realizable in that the sale for 85000 was initiated, it was not earned until January when the pool table was delivered. Okay. Next is for the accrual accounting principle. So the revenue should be recognized when earned regardless of collection and expenses should be recognized when incurred regardless of payment. Again, revenue in accrual accounting principle, the revenue should not be recognized when earned regardless of collection and expenses should be recognized when incurred regardless of payment. So on the other hand, the cash basis principle in which revenue is recorded when collected and expenses should be recorded when paid. So cash basis is not the generally accepted principle today. So example, when a barber finishes performing his services, he should record it as revenue. When the barbershop receives an electricity bill, it should record it as an expense even if it is unpaid. Okay. Next, we have disclosure principle. So, all the relevant and material information should be reported. You should disclose all relevant information. So, for example, the company should report all relevant information to the interested users. Another um, important principles we have the cost principle so i haven't listed it here i'm sorry so for cost principle accounts should be recorded initially at cost so for example when a company purchases a laptop it should be recorded at the price it was purchased another important principle that i haven't listed is the materiality principle so in case of assets that are immaterial to make a difference in the financial statements, the company should record um, it as an expense. So the materiality, um, the materiality concept is also called the materiality constraint. So, so it says that the financial information is material to the financial statement if it would change the opinion or view of a reasonable Person. So, in other words, all important financial information that would sway the opinion of a financial statement user should be included in the financial statement. So, the concept of materiality is relative in size and importance. For example, a school purchased an eraser with an estimated useful life of three years. Since an eraser is immaterial relative to assets, it should be recorded as an expense okay so another example for materiality principle is a large company has a building in the typhoon area during your land storm so the company building is destroyed and after a lengthy battle with the insurance company the company reports an extraordinary loss of 10,000 pesos so the company has net income of 10 million pesos the materiality concept states that this loss is immaterial because the average financial statement user would not be concerned with something that is only 1% of net income, okay? So the last topic for this video discussion is the qualitative characteristics of financial information. First, relevance. So the concept of relevance implies that financial statements can have predictive value and feedback value. This means that the financial statements are accurate and can be used to predict future company performance. Okay, so the um, three main characteristics of relevant account information is here. This one, predictive value, feedback value, and 
the last one is a timeless so these three are the um, main characteristics of relevance so when you say predictive value it refers to the fact that quality financial information can be used based on predictions forecast and um, projections so Financial analysis and investors can use past financial statements to chart performance trends and make predictions about future performance and profitability. Next is the feedback value. So the quality information has a feedback value when it can confirm or correct previous expectations. So in other words, users can examine financial information and confirm or um, adjust their predictions made on previous performance trends. So based on the feedback, users can make future decisions. So, okay, so this relevance, next we have reliably, reliability. So these three are not included as qualitative characteristics, but a main characteristics of relevance. So for timeless, timeless is um, one of the most important factors in relevant information out of date information does not do investors or creditors any good when they are trying to make current and future decisions so financial reporting must be timely and current in order to be used by investors and creditors next qualitative characteristics so this is number one so let's just clarify it here this is one and this is two so next is reliability. So the concept of reliability is it implies that financial information can be verified by many sources with evidence and that all financial information is presented. So in other words, the favorable and unfavorable, unfavorable financial information are presented in the financial statement. It's always on the financial statement. So there are three main attributes that all reliable financial information has first you have here verifiability representational representational faithfulness and neutrality so first qualitative characteristics we have relevant second reliability and for the reliability you have here the main attributes first verify verifiability i'm sorry verifiability so financial information is verifiable when multiple independent measures are used to come up with the same result right do you agree next you have here representational representational faithfulness so this simply means that the financial statements represent reality or what actually happened during the year and for the neutrality um in order for the FS or the financial statements to be reliable, they must be neutral. So by definition, of course, financial statements that are prepared by company management are somewhat biased because the management want to see the company improve. Okay. Next is comparability. So this is number three. Okay. Compara comparability. So, comparability is a quality of account information that addresses the usability of financial information. So, information that is prepared using the same measurement techniques and reported in a similar and can be judged side by side other similar financial information. So, this is extremely, extremely important to the end users of financial statements. Okay, that's all for this video discussion for your module two or week to topic of your fab m1 subject thank you